again, uh, here we are at our, um, well, I guess this is our third public meeting this year. We had two, I don't know what we call it, public meeting number three or number five, because we had two last year as well. But, uh, we are, uh, I'm joined again here today uh, by uh, Councilor at Large Steve Winslow and Pam Shadley from Shadley Architects, uh, Shadley Associates, sorry, and uh, Alex Pratt from the MRA. Um, today what we have is, uh, Pam's going to walk us through the master plan that, that they've put together that um, brings together everything we've talked about uh, to date um, and especially updates it from our conversation two weeks ago um, that we, we looked at three different scenarios that were less multiple choice and more a collection of features that we had uh, a good conversation about. Um, what we're also going to talk about is the nature of what you're looking at here. This is a master plan. Um, this is definitely in scope much more than we're going to be able to attempt uh, achieve in one year. We'll talk about what the total cost estimate is for the work you're seeing here, and then talk about some different phasing um, phasing options. You know, which chunk are we going to bite off first? Uh, and how are we going to prioritize that? Um, and there's there's some pros and cons to each of the way go about that. Um, but without further ado, I will get out of the way and I will handle the exam and should walk us through. Thank, Thank you. you, Counselor. I'll just make it forward for me. So here's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to have just a very brief summary of the work that we presented to the public meeting two weeks ago tonight. Um, then I'm going to describe for you the master plan that's the result of that work, which is here in your handouts. Talk about the budget, talk about, well, what are we going to build first? As the counselor said, we can't afford to build it all, so we're going to choose something to focus on. And then we'd like to have your feedback. Thank you. If I just click, say four words, maybe you'd be my yeah, yeah. forward again. And if you just, I'm um, using uh, There we go. Okay. I just want to go to the top of the slide. So these are not intended to be totally legible, which is good because they're not, <laughs> but these were the drawings that we presented last uh, two weeks ago tonight, and they were options presented for um, discussion. And if you remember, it's really um, the baseball field. If we keep it, then we have this much space left over to do other park things. If we remove the baseball field, then we can do these things with it. So, this option removed the field and we got grassy lawn. This option kept us a medium field, took out the outfield fence, and we got some um, extra room here. And then this option said, we're going to go all baseball and have bleachers and dugouts and that kind of thing, kept the tennis court. So based on your feedback, we um, developed, uh, and here's your feedback. So the community that was here that night preferred option two but liked certain components of the other two options to be inserted in there. So they want, the community wanted to keep one tennis court, but have basketball uh, hoops on either end. Um, a loop walk around the site, so people can take their kids on their small bikes or walk around the site. More shade, um, vegetation, and maybe a shade structure to keep people um, cool if we can. Organized play areas in the park by age group. Uh, to generally, play equipment comes ages 2 to 5, 5 to 12. But then you also wanted something for teenagers and, and older kids. Um, add a sidewalk at the corner of Granite Street, because that is a uh, safety issue, perhaps. At least the community requested that. Can there be a lawn area with a shade shelter for outdoor events? So this is a shade shelter pointing at a lawn. Think music, think festivals, think people on blankets and chairs. Um, pedestrian lighting, trash and recycling, and can the dog park have new stone surfacing to be consistent with the dog park at Pine Banks? Okay, so here's where we ended up. So you can see the components that I talked about. A renovate, when we say renovated, what that means is the dugouts are now brought up to handicap code. As you know, they're recessed into the ground. That's not ADA compliable. We would make them ADA compli uh, compliant and put a shade shelter over them. Do some backstop work. Take out the outfield fence, which means we can have a contiguous green space. And that was a UA soccer field and the concerts that you all requested. 
expand the playground, the existing playground is about to here, so we would expand it. Picnic area, and uh, it could be a future splash pad. The challenge course would be a fitness course for the older kids, that was well received. And then you can see here's our uh, shade shelter that could open up into the greater green space and we could move those trees apart a little bit. Um, one tennis court, about at the same place as the existing court, so we could uh, use at least that pavement or the subgrade, and the ball park, the dog park. So what we do now is, this is the big plan, and we're now gonna take a walk and look at parts of the park in greater detail. So starting at the backstop area, you can see that uh, there's an area for future storage, um, right, there used to be two containers, now there's one container. Who knows in the future if there'll be any containers, but there's spots back there for storage of some kind, if that's desired. New infield grading. We've heard you that drainage out of the field is a problem. It compacts pretty hard and then it turns into mud. So we would do turf work to loosen that soil and make it more usable. There's our ADA compliant dugouts and we would have an entrance plaza with a curved bench similar to this. You recognize this, this is Howard Park, the circular area with benches where you can sit facing this way or sit facing this way um, in a covered dugout. So that's the corner. Now we're moving around to the north. Uh, we would probably keep the brand new big piece of play equipment that's in the playground, maybe replace some of the smaller ones, but focus this area on, on play equipment for ages two to five and expand this one for ages five to 12. New benches, we heard that from you two weeks ago as well. Um, and new playground surfacing, that the current, um, the current favorite, if you will, is port in place rubber. It has the resiliency, it's pretty expensive. So the more we expand our playground, the more money we spend on surfacing. But the um, wood fiber, which is ADA compliant, if you buy the right kind, because it interlocks, is sort of falling a little bit out of favor it's because it gets everywhere under a swing, it digs out. So people are, are starting to use this surfacing more in playgrounds. Yeah, I'm sorry, yes. I'm sorry, yes. uh, I see the trees in the playground area. And, yeah. and I'm sorry, I forgot to ask this the other day. Yes. Um, the, does this do, uh, or will we, during technical sort of development, uh, retain as many existing trees as we can. That is our existing tree, the great big one. So when um, landscape architects draw a tree with a circle in the middle, it means existing. Oh, this okay. is our lingo. Oh, we have like this one. And maybe it's, is it over here? It's like, what well, is the is the left boundary of the playground expanding? No. Okay, so it's like kind of in the center left of the two to five circle. Yeah. Center left. Oh, here? Yeah, in the middle of that. So Linda and I. Okay, in the middle of that. Yeah. yeah. We would look at the health of all the trees, and we're not arborists or specialists, but we can at least sort of see things, and we can make a recommendation to you if we think it's on the end of its useful life, then maybe we don't work too hard to keep it, right? We turn it into play. But if we think it's in good shape, it's in reasonable shape and it has some years to go, then we would adjust the design to keep it. And there's one, so there's one right there, like kind of in the middle of the ages two to five circle, and then I think there one is one where like five to 12, yeah. you know, like if you're looking at, like that would be like right where that, that one yeah. that's portrayed as existing is the other one. Yeah, it could be our survey was a little off, so yeah. Our policy is to keep existing trees if they're in good health and they aren't impeding, something else we're trying to do like ADA compliance. Um, and besides, you all have told us you want shade. So we're going to keep existing trees if we can. Down the tree. So what's here? There's one on the ground. There is one. That one's yeah, the ground. Yeah, but I think they're pulling it into the, basically they're moving the fence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's all right. Thank you. Yeah, you. I know your part well. Yeah. Because um, I mean, how many times have you said, like, we, we sit under a, you know, in the summertime when we get We play. like shade, don't yeah. we? Right? Especially when the kids are playing. Okay, so now we're moving around the corner, still on Jacob Street, another park entrance. 
you come in and you can go this way or this way. And we've called it a picnic area, but that would be a logical location for a splash pad if that were ever part of the community's desire in the future. We're near the street, there's probably a water supply, there's probably drainage over there. So that's a possibility. Um, and then the challenge course, this was the image that we showed a couple weeks ago about what that means. It's part fitness, it's part, um, what are the reality TV shows where you're jumping from this? Thank you. <laughs> That's the kind of idea up there, but it's to engage older kids. Um, and this is the slide where we're suggesting that all of the major pedestrian walkways are lit. This is an image of the lights at uh, Howard Park, South Broadway Park. They're not as expensive as the ornamental ones, so we're proposing these because actually sight lighting can eat up a huge amount of budget. If you let it, we don't want to let it. So we're, we're suggesting that those are sight lights and just the main loop walk would be illuminated. Okay. Now, Pam, just even on that style of lighting, yep. I know it's not ornamental. Is there like different shades? I mean, is there silver? You can even do like a black, brown, or brown. Brown, yes. The same yes, color. yes. And so, the key yeah. point is that it's they're all LEDs and, just, yeah. and it's 100% down. Right? Yes. So because the night sky, we also care about that. So there's no escape. Because the guy who lives up here, he's real pain. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody I know? <laughs> okay, coming around the corner now, the existing tennis court is here to maybe the word seat wall. Mm -hmm. Right? It's big. So now we have one. It's um, a tennis court with a hoop on each end. So you. I can't, I can't really call it half court. I don't think it is a half court, but it's a shooting area to play horse or one of those other games. But it's fenced in, it's got benches. Um, the shade shelter, we're showing this image. The idea is uh, that it's light, airy, it's, it moves up. Good visibility, we don't want any uh, nonsense going on under there. So we just want it to be fully visible. You can get them and put lights in underneath them too to make sure it's illuminated. And then there could be a play area behind it, which is just painted asphalt, right? You could, um, four square could go, you could, the kids could make up their own games based on that sort of flexible space. The uh, memorial stays, it's right here, that's pretty much the existing walkway. And that would be that corner of the park, okay. And now, um, the dog park, this is a picture of Pine Banks, and we were told that, uh, the surfacing, you'd like the surfacing to change to mimic this. And uh, and you requested a, a, a filler station for water bottles, drinks, and pets. So we found one that, uh, that we're suggesting it's here. It could also be here. It probably has to be somewhere where we can get water supply to it from the street. So that's the detail. Um, other things that make a park apart, picnic tables, um, that's a, an image from the playground at Howard Park, um, trash recycling, lights, um, these are the things that add. We're organizing spaces, right, and we're proposing improvements, and these are the things that add color, use, safety. Yeah. On that line, can we talk fencing? Yes. So, um, I noticed this chain link, but this just says fencing, is there? Consideration of the like not having chain link in the little prison yard playground. Or <laughs> <laughs> as high. Yeah. Doesn't need to go back. Okay. Can we go back to an overall site then? I don't know if the next one's a site. I think we gotta go all the way back. Cool. Yeah, gotta go all the way back. Mm -hmm. to, yeah, there's not that many, so Okay. So I think you're talking about it's is it eight feet tall? It's tall. Yeah, it's it's like tall. fifteen. It's, is it really that tall? So tall. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of better. So I could get it between the ball field and the playground, right? For straight balls, but I don't see any reason to have Like the that. street side, I don't yeah, think it's that high. I totally get it on like the baseball side, but yeah. the street yeah. side, same thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think it's kind of a remnant. I think at some point there was concern about people hanging out in the park at night, so, and the six foot fence gets to the top over, so. Yeah, but it's not, I think it's is it locked at night now? Yeah, it's not even locked, so yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. It, it's, it's a different thing. Agreed. I'll make a note of that. Yeah. Yeah. I think this, all this, like, kids hanging on the park was like, 
when I was young and I was hanging out in parks. <laughs> now I don't think they go out. Yeah. No, that's true. That's true. They play four Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Um, but 
in concept, we'd say we'd like to install that challenge course because what we're doing is we're doing all the active play pieces in the first in the first round. We would remove the outfield fence because what does that do? It gives us a greater contiguous green space to run around. Um, we would do a walkway along the playground and the challenge course. In other words, we don't get the full loop walkway, mostly because we have to remove the second tennis court to get this area, right? But we're going to try to at least finish that corner as best we can. Is that a question? Yeah. Would it be cost comparative to do A, but swap the challenge course for the dog park surface? Bing, 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 bing. Probably. <laughs> he said somebody's going to bring that up. <laughs> well, that was, that was what I said with my... <laughs> And these are posed yeah. for your comments, right? So that's a perfect comment for us to, to work with. So we'll just, let's go to the next one. What do you get in the next one? Okay, the, the new tennis courts with their basketball hoops, the shade shelter, in other words, we've removed that second tennis court. That means we can finish this area. We put the dog park servicing in this phase and a new walkway from Jacob Street to Granite Street at the uh, at the dog park, so I think what that is saying is that this piece right here would be rebuilt as needed. Okay, site lighting is shown, um, but it would be in a future phase. Back to my comment about how expensive site lighting is. You know, if we decide to say we're going to do site lighting for this piece of walkway in this phase, then there's probably something else we have to take out because it is pretty expensive. And the you, the first phase you put it in, it triggers the electric supply, it triggers the, uh, the controllers, right, and all of the gizmos, and you would buy that size for the full part, not just for your first phase. So it's expensive. So I just yes. have a question on that, yep. in terms of, um, would, you know, with the walkway, would you be planning in this phase the conduit at least? I mean, that yes. You would, yes. So you do the subsurface work, you yes. raise it, then the... The Empty pipe, right, ready right. to receive wires. So, but you might not put in the controller box or whatever. That That's right. Just have to wait until you get that. That's because right. it's not really the wires that are going to be the money. It's going to be the digging and it's going to be getting through ledge if you need to. That, and, and it's, and it's buying that pole and it's the pole. Yeah. 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 What about solar non wire stuff? Yeah. So, we yes. talked about that last time and sort of just the, the surface area of the solar panel, panel that sticks on top of it. Yeah. Basically, in, in Pam's experience, people were like, I want it, and then once they saw it, they were like, too much shape. Yeah. yeah. It's too much, yeah. It's a very big panel for a very little light. Yeah. 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 Technology's getting better, though. We can always, you know, when we get ready to actually do the first phase of work. We should look at that. We should look at that. We do have in our back pocket a mini golf area that has a window that's actually functioning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Big thinking. This is our mini golf area. We just have our window. Right, right. Okay, then the third area would be the. Um, the, the baseball area. So a new backstop, the dugouts, major turf redo in the infield and in the lawn. Um, there, there's a, we, if you remember the first phase when it did that play, we could do the field and just that play um, and regrade and do um, soil improvements in the outfield. I do prefer what I said before, but does this necessarily exclude finishing a U8? According to our numbers, yes. And again, because the second tennis court ah, okay. is right there, right? So these were just really to trigger a conversation. If you guys, I, we're interested in knowing what you prefer to do first. So just a little yeah. too much Robert's rules here. Point of order, point of information. Um, what about this, though? Would that also, would that corner be that's a good question. Yeah. It's drawn I thought this was this way because what we're really doing is, correct me if I'm wrong. Please. I thought what this was was take the fence out. Yes. We're not actually addressing oh, I think that's a, the field here, which is yes. not, like, not look at it. It is not grass. Right. It is mowed weeds. Yeah. Um, and so it might be more of this. And if you look at, like, the baseball equipment, that's some expensive stuff. The dugouts are expensive. Yeah. So that would probably be 
just the cost that we waited over to this side to get all that done and, and right. grading and, and uh, right. resurfacing the infield. Can you go back to number yeah. one? Because your question was, do we get the uh, <coughs> do we get the U8 uh, soccer? Yeah, because I think so. It, it is listed here, so it was. It's in our number, so we must have uh, removed. So it doesn't say what it was for. It, so. There seems to be some overlap between yeah. A and C, because C also yeah. shows the play area. So is, right. that, is that in the intent area? The intent is to promote a discussion, right? It's yeah. It's not that we're going to do it twice. This is all choices yeah, to do it first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because this was pretty, I think the player is pretty talented, but it was just trading off kind of this stuff, and then maybe A.1 is instead of this, this. Versus, do we want to get baseball going right. uh, much sooner? So, just a quarter of priority. I mean, I think there's the there's the outfield. So, sorry, there's the outfield. So, like the outfield fence so, goes right to it. Yes. Right. So, yeah. I'm just looking at Google Maps. Yep. And that comes out right here. So, this would be. But if it's in the money to be the get the fields going with actual turf, then there can be some soccer, like pickup soccer use without Yeah, you yeah, might be talking stations. more like this for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the no. tennis court touches the outfield. So I'll throw the whole different wrinkle here as, yeah. as yeah. Um, you know, we're, one of the things we're, we're working, by, I think July 11th, we're working this park grant is due. So that's sort of the $400,000 that will really you know, we've been focusing on and with the initiation of this grant. So and that that would has to be matched by two hundred thousand dollars. So that's kind of the, the bare minimum that we need to be prepared on July eleventh. Now those grants take a they take a while for them to consider. And you know if we I think we're op very optimistic we should be able to get one of those because right. Mall has a great track record of those. Um, you know but we generally will have um, some time and it will We'll have to commit that two hundred thousand dollars by the end of the year, basically. Um, but that also gives us some time to look at some other potential sources. And I mean, I think it's you know, it's possible that we could. The ultimate budget might be in the million to one point one million range. So it's sort of like I think we do have to really kind of settle on if we don't get the other money, what would be the very base thing that people want to see as the first step. And then, like, we will, Councilor Kendall and I will be working to see maybe we can get step two done at the same time. So that's, that's just kind of the thing. I think the 1.5 million, you know, just in, in my having raised money for parks, that's a real stretch. Um, you know, we have one of the great things in Mall, we have what's called the Adelaide Baird Foundation, and they do uh, contribute substantial amount of money to parks. I mean, they're, they're putting over $600,000 into the field project so um, that's a potential someone if we we haven't approached them because we wanted this first so we so, know what we want yeah so we wanted to know what we wanted to ask for so so like I say that's kind of the situation right now right now I think you know we definitely got to have to boil things down to what's the first step the second and third step it, it's not too much to imagine that we will be able to do the first and second step in the first, you know, in, by next year. Yeah, um, so if that's definitely So yeah, I, don't know, I mean, that's something that isn't shown in you. So I don't know if that was the. Given what you just said, should we then be ranking, like figure if you figure out option one A and then rank what comes next, so that if more money comes up. I would like to hear ranking for, for the options just to start with. Yeah, the A, B, and C. Or, or, or like what pieces of the park are most important to you to get built first? Um, yeah, I, for me it's the, the A, but with the dog park surface. And I don't even have a dog, but I feel for their requests on the rock. Uh, yeah. and, and, and I'm just, I don't, I know it's going to be unscientific, but I'm right? really biased, but I, I mean, I think I've, I've looked at the options, and I think there's a lot of, sorry, I should listen to everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think there's a lot of um, possibility that they can pull that off. A lot of logical reasons to do that. Yep. But, sorry. I'm just, 
probably got some care. Probably. 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 I don't think that means we don't do it. I just mean I think that it takes more conversation. I think you can bring people along or talk about it or find ways to mitigate that risk. Whereas stuff over here, I, I think. I think the UA soccer field, I think he actually really needs it. It's soccer's a very popular sport right now, many cross fields. Um, and we don't have anywhere in four or six to practice soccer. Yeah. So I definitely think that making that UA field is going to be really good. Just that this but I think it should be for adults too. Like. <laughs> the spot that's in. It's great that I, I love the fact that this is using the spot which feels wasted right now. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's wasted because it's so if we it's gonna take some it's gonna take work to get it. Like, so digging, it's gonna be <coughs> yes, but I'm thinking that yep. it's gonna cost. Yeah, there's there's still an additional cost to get it ready, but it's right. probably it's less like than last, shipping that yeah. shipping it. Or whatever. But just, just to clear, are, are we taking a, like some informal sort of vote right now? I think it's more, yeah. more of a yes. conversation because we're not going to like. And you are not going to vote, but your opinion counts. We're here to listen to you. Well, 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 just for me personally, overall, I'd lean towards option C first, A second, B third. C? And why C? What do you like about C? Uh, I'm trying. Just, just in my personal, I'm trying to think strategically for the long term. The greatest immediate impact, generally across the board, <coughs> is fixing that field. Okay, that, that, that's the that's the greatest immediate general impact. If that field is upgraded and usable just about by everybody for soccer, baseball picnics, whatever, that immediately sucks a lot of people in. It brings families in. Everything. But C doesn't improve the entire field. No. no but, 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 it, but C also includes playgrounds. the playground yeah, the area. Playgrounds, the, the, main, the main part of a park would be the playground for people, like, right. especially yeah. like new parents and new families are coming e exactly. in. Exactly. Yeah. The with the, with the, between the playground and the field, that, that's, in my opinion, the bulk of it right there. Then everything else is gravy. You know, then if we go to option A, that's, you know, well, well op option A doesn't even matter that much because option C takes, you know, takes over two thirds of option A already. Yeah, Done. The reverse is option C. Exactly. There's a lot of overlap. That there's a lot of overlap. But what option A doesn't have is all of this. Yes. The, 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 field, the field, the but sports, the it's critical. Like, it's critical to a lot of They will use it. And so I have, I have talked to the yeah, homes that do baseball. Like, it's not that, oh, we don't maintain it because they won't use it. They're like, they're not using it because it's somewhat dangerous. Like, the kid will break an ankle up there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this divots. If, if we um, fix that field, it'll stuff. get a okay, lot of use. There's, there's, there's like uh, concrete footings for the fence posts out mm -hmm. here, okay. just sticking out of the ground. Wait, I mean, it's, you know, everybody's scraped them. Yeah, the backdrop is, and yeah, people do cut themselves with jacks. Mm -hmm. But, it, but what right. is, if you soccer? do the soccer, wouldn't that bring more people just by the number of people who play soccer versus baseball? Maybe? Yeah, and I think the reason we so let me just address that general thing here, right? So whatever Steve, you know, what the council wants to say, not the same, right? I feel like we have to do both. Like, we want a multi-use field here. We want people to be able to play soccer, we want people to be able to play baseball. Like, maybe we're not going to have major leagues here, right? But T-ball, minor league, um, little league, and, and little kid soccer, to be able to, be, to take them off the other fields, it, it helps everybody, it takes pressure off everybody. Mm -hmm. it, it would be general support for it. Um, and the playground, I mean, just, you know, as every, 
you know, who's going to be the most engaged in all of this? It's, it's, it's folks who want to come down here and use this uh, with their kids. And right here we have wasted space. We have this batting cage that, you know, as you point out, doesn't have the net inside of it. So it's not really a functional batting cage. It's more dangerous than if you just went out there and went out to the fields to do it. So, I mean, I think, I think between the two of these, the importance is weighted over here. And while this is great and it's going to be great and used and an improvement, it's just we know that this part is probably the least, lowest priority. It's like some good ideas. And then I think this is somewhere, you know, it's like, we'll just call this one, two, three general priorities, I think, from what I'm getting from everybody. I mean, for the community around the park, I think you could go playground, dog park, um, little kid soccer. That really, well, playground, dog park, bring in people that are not involved yeah, in park organized park. sports. Oh, more, yeah. The soccer can be used for pickup if you have goals. Especially the dog park is pretty low hanging fruit for a long yeah. time. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Real real yeah, I think the dog park can be put in. It's not that expensive, really. So. It's yeah. just for table. So as I'm trying to think of the playground right now. So if you were to take out the the batting cages, and we say we did option C, we took out the batting cages, and we're not doing option A, what are we doing with that space that we just ripped up? Like what's been, what happens to that area that's not touched? In the plan, it's expanded playground and right. green space with batting cages. But I think the, I think the batting cage ends it's like... Pink. Yeah, the batting cage is like here. Yeah. So like when you take right. so if we're going in the option C section, what like what does that look like in that area? Well, probably something up. simplified and okay. prepped. Right. Just clean it up. Grass. Clean it up. Okay. Right. Yeah. And then next phase, maybe it's an add alternate where we say okay maybe we can fit in just this little spot right here. Right. Or maybe we just it's another year we come back and we do it with with um, better prep. But I mean that's good. I was thinking like that's. And then what about that top corner? So right that's here, anything. I mean, this is pretty much crushing enough. We um, we've got the existing memorial, which you know we're not gonna we're not taking the memorial up, right? Uh, this, this is this sketch suggests a new walkway. Yeah, you see the curve, and maybe some new planting. Okay. Get rid of the overgrown stuff and put in some new stuff. Yeah. But it's really doing the same thing as it's doing right now. It's encircling that memorial from the street side. But it feels overgrown down there, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. And can we look at the cost for the splash pad, the preparations, or the splash pad itself in that corner? So right now, okay. this like has that area kind of prepped for the splash pad. Um, as much as it pained me, and I thought that was the coolest thing in the world, like we realize that that's a lot of intense um, expenditure for one small spot. Short season, so just the dollars for usage hours there. Um, yeah. It didn't rise on the, to the top of the list. I mean, I'm super biased for it, yeah. but I, you know, budget, you know, we got everything else. Yeah, I can't get ahead of it. <coughs> I think what? For, Sorry. There might be, well, I, I'm looking at this one of two ways. Uh, we can try to have phase one include the most option, the, the options that will draw the most people for that set amount of money that we have for phase one, or we can do it. Phase one sets us up to be able to do a subsequent phase more effectively, or we can do maybe not the net, the raw number of most people, but a little bit for every, for different demographics. Um, I guess those are the three different lenses that we're yeah. still looking at. It. And I don't think any one of those is correct, uh, per se, but I think that's kind of an interesting way to look at it. Or, or you know, geographically, what part of the, the side are you going to work on? Because that makes it cheaper. If you're doing something, if you're doing the playground by Jacob Street, and you're doing the dog park, and you're doing, uh, I don't know, the value has been up the pole, you can't get it. There will be a cost, I think, depending on what you're doing all over. You just don't want to do part of something one year and then another part of the year, right? So that so it's three years where 
everything is unusable. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. you want a <laughs> contiguous <laughs> area <laughs> to focus on. Yeah. So when when okay, so I've never been part of any big construction like this before. So say we do option C. We tear that place down. Where when do we get to use it again? Like when is that playground going to be used for kids again? Like when is that baseball field and when is baseball? Actually, I have a huge question. Uh, when is baseball and how long is, is it? Baseball is April to June. Okay. Yep. And a construction project at this size generally is 12 months. So basically we would start next summer. We wouldn't, that baseball field would not be used until the following year. Yeah, I mean, the way the park grant works is we may, you know, and you have to be very specific, we probably doing the design and bidding in the spring, looking to probably July 1st construction start, yeah. and then you have to be done basically by May 31st of the next year. Yeah, you got to do it with the yeah, you got okay. 11 months to build. Not for nothing, but the splash that season is longer than the baseball season. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah. <laughs> um, but the other thing too is, so 12 months for all of this now, is that 12 months where everything in parallel is being done, or is it 12 months where, you know, three months over here, two months over there? So, you know, contractors don't like to give yeah. that to the community areas that they may have brought to 80% completion. Yep. Right. They will leave the construction cuts up, up until they are buttoned up. Mm -hmm. So that argues for a contiguous area of the park so that the community can use all the other areas of the park. But whatever we pick, generally it's, it's 12 months, wow. knowing that not much happens in January through right. March. Um, yes. It's but it's like, the, you gotta bite the bullet at some point. Right, yes. Because right now, if you look at, if you look at that, play, like you guys look at that playground, I mean, the wood chips that were supposed to be there, just, they're gone. I mean, they're not there. You know, it's supposed to be this much of a buffer. It's like a bench here. Like you can see the bench, exactly. You can see the bench. Um, <laughs> the other way to look at it, another lens, safety issues, mm -hmm. right? Compliance issues. I'd say the playground has some safety issues. I'd say the ball field has some safety issues and some yeah. ADA compliance issues. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what's going to get the city in trouble is the other way to look at it. We should have seen the playground before the forest picks up this last time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it was. It's beautiful when it was first done. It's just that the one thing there is the wood chips just eroding up. And now could we go in there and just dump a bunch of wood chips? Up? Just a question. I know, um, I mean, obviously there's the demolition of the outfield fence, which, which would be a huge thing. I mean, is it possible in a first phase to really just address the grass of the outfield and make yeah. that, is that, is that affordable? Uh, like I say, to, you know, I can say in it. I mean, the backstop's not great, the infield's not great, but it's not the outfield. Like so if you do it soccer and move one, just continue the grass work yeah. the corner. Yeah. yeah, so maybe, yeah, it becomes like that. Yes. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense, because I feel like once you start working too. on the field, you should finish the field. Yeah. 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 Why not just do this, right? Yeah. You take, if you take on the bed, okay, why not just do this? Now, yeah. you know, baseball said, They'll, they'll use it. I mean, I don't know if the, the expectation is to have a batting cage there, but it's just, there's so much other stuff that we could use it for. Yeah. And we did spend $75,000 on a great batting cage, double cage down the street, so we can use these ones for 20 cents. Yeah. But, uh, and with, so. with the contiguous thing, like, you could do the dog park surface in like a weekend, right? Like, that yeah. wouldn't have to be under construction to take for 12 months. It would probably be two. It would be probably two weeks. That's my guess. Yeah. Yes. That but that might be something. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the playground part of option A and, and a field part, mm -hmm. that would get a long this, this, way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This. Yeah, I think we would rather have the fields. Somewhere. And then the dog, I mean, like, that would be, and then, um, like I say, we can look at the pathway as something we try to stretch towards. So the playground expansion, the uh, remove the batting cages, remove the batting cages, and uh, develop the turf. And is there the turf would be? Is there a utility box or something? There's, there's a water. Thing. There's a water thing. I mean, yeah. we had to show. It's actually that white thing. So that's, that's yeah. That's where the water comes in. So yeah. the power comes in by the water. So. Yeah. But, um, well, yeah. There's this hanging wires over here. <laughs> there's some hanging wires over here. <laughs> So then, like, I mean, it, you know, it, what's your sense, Pam? I mean, I mean, typically, I think you would try to do the pathways first, and the kind of, and then, the, I mean, it sounds like the desire is. It seems like whatever is ripped up, we ought to put in the yeah. the, the subgrade stuff, mm -hmm. right? If we've got an excavator on site and we have a hole in there, all of the underground stuff. Um, we can do. I mean, right now, I think there's the. Um, I think there's a pathway that kind of comes here. So yes. mm -hmm. if we were going to do this, we had to rip that out and then have to add something here to get to there. So well, those trees are very what, 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 Which is also going to be the tennis court? Right. Um, well, there's a pathway around the tennis court. So if you could get it to that existing pathway, then so you true. can keep the, the footprint of the existing tennis court just here. Yeah, I mean, you know, that, like I say, that if you, you know, if you do this pathway here and then around here, and then this could all be kind of a little linear type of thing. It seems like it's. Now, what are we thinking? And then, like, the, so what, yeah, so, what are we thinking in terms of, now I know we're talking about backstop, what are we thinking about in terms of any fencing or whatever around the green? I mean, you know, this big picture uh, of what that. Do we need that? Right. We're not showing any. Not showing any, right? Yeah. Just showing well, I, just, I just want to. Your ball's going to run out, your home run is going to run out, and it's. Uh, yeah. Well, like, which is the which is the point, and then that's I'm, I'm just bringing that up, um, just so we're all agreed on that. Um, this trade-offs, right? Exactly. Like, you're, if somebody really whacks one, it's going to be gone. Right? But every other time of the year and day, you know, uh, day, people are going to be more. It's just you know, yeah, it has more flexible flexible use. Flexible, yeah. Yeah. Lily, I mean, wants to use it. They temporary fences. There's always that option that during that season they can put something up. Or a special yeah. weekend event focused on baseball. Like, yeah. like if they have a tournament and they need yeah. that, they can bring it in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So are great you, feedback. <laughs> it's great feedback. Do you, I mean, do you, Pam, do you think we have enough? I, I mean, I guess it's looking at the budget to see. I mean, it sounds like. So I think the, the thing here is get yeah. feedback and priorities, and then there's the technical yep. right. us sitting there with spreadsheets yep. and putting the, out some put the pieces together. Yeah. Yep. And, then, and I think, like I say, some of it is we, the $600,000, we, we are, I mean, I think as we have already put in a first step for a second CPA grant. And so right now we're, we're trying to get keep that expectation of being $400,000. I mean, if this creeps up to seven, seven fifty, dollars I don't think that's, we could still go to the CPC and say, look, if we, and that would be conditional. If we get this $400,000 grant, will you put in the, the yeah, so there's, we have, that's within the city's control, and like I say, I, I would be surprised if our community preservation committee and our city council didn't vote to get 50% match. But I think there is also this limit. I, I know CPCs typically don't like to bond. And so we get, uh, at, at 300,000 or whatever, you get to the point where you're, you're, you're like at, at Roosevelt, where we had to vote on a $1.4 million bond to get that project done because it was you know, a $2 million project. So there is kind of this practical limit. But that's, that's so yes. I mean, just to be, to, I mean, yeah. to be blunt, I think that's, that's our job to figure that. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, no, like I say, but, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. but like I say, community yes. preservation committees, they, they have, 
you know, we have some reserve that this first round of community preservation funding, they did not spend all the open space and recreation money they could. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a pool there. And then- Because they got uh, a certain amount of applications. People, they got applications. Yeah, so. There were some, there were a handful that just needed more information that just weren't ready to go on to the next, mm -hmm. you know, they weren't really like, Denied, they were just like, hey, you gotta come back with a little, you gotta shop this. Well, there's this so practical thing. Did you just get planning money for traffic? We just got planning money. Planning planning so okay. so I, wasn't sure, I wasn't sure what you were under a deadline. Like I said, there, there's this practical thing that it's, um, community, I just, I'm working with community preservation committees. Once you bond, all of a sudden you're spending some of your money on interest. Mm -hmm. So there's this practical thing of saying, do, is this project important enough? to, you know, and is, is the only way we can do this project to borrow money, like at Roosevelt we had to, because it was just, you, you have this huge field and it's gonna cost this much money to do. Here, you can divide it up a little bit, you can't, you couldn't, you couldn't cut that project in half and still have the right. project, so, this, so that's like, I, like I say, there, there's some flexibility, but like I say, as we push above $200,000, I feel like you get, a little more resistance. And well, like you definitely do. So that's, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's something for us to talk about. Yeah. Like, you do get resistance because this field, this, this has been done before. Like, money has been spent on this, and then the like, grass got crappy again because yeah. people didn't take care of it. So, like, that's going to be pushback. Yeah. That we we're going to have to put a foot down and make sure it gets uh, maintained. Yeah. I do want to point out that the, one of the pros of bonding in a situation like this is construction costs will go up every year. Right, right. Faster than Right, so that, that is one of the yep. things, and as you divide something up into three pieces because you've got to put it out to bid three times, and you know, it, it, it does, contractors tend to build more aggressive, bid more aggressively on a bigger project. So you do have that, you know, three separate projects in total might be more yeah, than And it's also ones. shared overhead for, like, yeah. as you said, contiguous spaces, there's, there's so stuff you have to do to get I it. I think, Dave and I would love to work to get it all done. <laughs> no, but I think but I it's like practical. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but I think there is this practical thing of, you know, just in kind of my rough estimates, about one point one million is sort of probably what we could would be the maximum, you know, we could get without really blowing ourselves with the CPA and, and the Bayer Foundation. So, so I think it's you know somewhere between six hundred thousand and one point one. But you know, like I say, we have to understand what the six hundred thousand dollar thing is. is might be a little creep there. 1.1 would be, a, be you know, a little bit of a stretch. 1.5 is, you know, I, I think you really have to, you, you can't, we have to do above that um, in the second project. I, I don't know if we would be able to line up that much money. So no, that's yeah, just kind yeah, of my sense. Exactly what we're not going to, yeah, like yes. that's how I yeah, yeah. introduced the whole thing. We're yeah. not doing it in one phase. Yeah. We're not going to get it all done in one Yeah, phase. we're not going to get it all done in one phase. And like I say, there's some maybe ability to stretch a little bit beyond one of these options, but I don't think we can, you know. Right. So, so that's what we have to do. So, um, so anything else that folks want to bring up for tonight? Um, so I'm on record at the last meeting as not being a huge fan of the existing playground equipment, but I think the toddler stuff and the factor 12 stuff are fine to keep if there can be some sort of like safer slide option, like the little kids can reach for it. Little kids can actually use it. Like the current slide is just, there's just one, it's so dangerous yeah. to get onto. Yeah, I think we would, yeah, add something for little kids, littler kids to use. Maybe not take that one away, but add something yeah. for little, yeah. little, little, littler kids. The little bouncy things, the yeah. swings, the fire truck are all fine, the big climbing thing is fine, but having more yeah. of an intermediate option. I wonder if there's an intermediate thing to do with the tennis sports. Yeah. Like if it yeah. is in phase one, how much work is it really for the basketball hoop? Yeah, because I mean, one of the but things. But again, so we know, so hold on, sorry. That's, a, so it's not just the budget, budget anything. Like I said before, there's there's other, there's some things that are, there's more agreement on with the community, and there's other things that, that are going to take more time, like more conversation and bringing people for a while. I'm not giving up on it, but we, you know, I don't want to shove that. Prejudice against basketball. I know, this is right. But we can. <laughs> I mean, I think the tennis courts get used. I don't know. I just, they do get used. I think they a lot of long. kids would play hoops. Yeah. You know, they want to shoot a hoop. That's what I did when I was a kid. It was so right. doesn't seem like it should be that. I was terrible at it. I mean, it is it's just, it's an, an option of it. <laughs> <laughs> You're just doing something.
having someone come in and just put in a you resurface. Right. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, redo them. You here. know what else I love in that tennis court? And somewhere in the city is a, is a wall to play tennis against. That's what I did when I was a kid. I'm a horrible tennis player, but I loved playing tennis against the wall. Yeah. yeah. And not, there's not one in the city or in this whole area that just sit and hit a ball against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's just not the top of Right. Um, so, I, so, yeah, so. Can you go to the last slide? I think there's a, this, this I have another question about baseball. So the field that's there right now, I, I've, my son's five and he doesn't, he's not into sports yet, so I have no idea about sports. So the field that's there now, what age is it? Little League. So Little it's League, that's yeah, what up age? Up to age 12. 12, so okay. Yeah. And let me tell you, the first year of T-ball, when you think they're gonna have position, they're just, they're just a mob of children. I'm terrified for this phase. But I'm I'm laughing life, and but fighting for the <laughs> ball with their own teammates. It's, it's ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> it used to, but, but I mean, I've watched the great baseball games down there, so it is nice to have it. It is. It would be really, you know. I mean, I know the numbers have gone down, but still, there's a lot of this, it's nice. A lot of nostalgia for baseball. Because the soccer like. field is eight and under, so that's. It's just the size. Of the it's just the size. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because you just don't have the size for. Yeah, you know, I just think the bigger the bigger the people, the faster yeah. they run. The more space. Yeah, that's, that that, that area bigger. gets covered a lot faster. But like in my, I used to live in Cape Verde, down at Magazine Beach. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't matter what the size of the field is. If there are nets, you could, you'll get people of all ages to pick up. Like, pick up, absolutely. Evening. Well, absolutely, and we will get that. It's just in terms of if you have like a fish and like mm -hmm. organized leagues, you have a certain 